we are looking at determining the number of terms in a geometric series. And the, determining the number of terms can be a difficult task, but we're going to tackle this. We have a sum of n terms of the series 5 plus 15 plus 45, and we have something, a bunch in the middle here, and then 16,400. Let's determine the number of terms by using these two methods here. We're going to try and solve an equation with a common base. So if we think about this, this is the sum of the terms. So we can consider this as Sn. We actually don't know what the n is. Uh, you know, it could be 7, could be 8, could be uh, 9. We, we don't really know, but we're going to use this Sn. Well, we have the formula for an Sn. That's going to be equal to Let's try a times r to the n minus 1. If we look at our formula sheet, divided by r minus 1. So if we take a look at what we know, we have this value, which is our a or t1 value. And it looks like we can also calculate our r. Our r is t2 divided by t1, and that's 15 divided by 5. That's equal to 3. So looking at a formula here, we looks like we have our r in both two places, our a, and we're given information to tell us that the sn is 16,400. So if we continue this, we can say 16,400 is equal to our first term, 5, and that's multiplied by our common ratio, 3, to the n, which we don't know yet, minus 1, and then we have our 3, our common ratio 3, minus 1. Okay, when we simplify, we can continue here. 16,400 is equal to 5 times 3 to the n minus 1 divided by 2. So if we double this 16,400, then we can say, using an arrow, 32,800 is equal to, I'm multiplying by 2 here, so that cancels out this 2, 5 to the 3n minus 1. And trying to solve for this bracket here, we can say that this is going to be, dividing by 5, we have 6,560 is equal to 3 to the n minus 1. And isolating this 3 to the n, we have 3 to the n will be equal to then 6560 plus 1, or in other words, this is 6561. Now, if we use a common base, it would be likely that we could probably use this base 3. So we're going to try and guess a few here. We can say 3 to the n is equal to 3 to some exponent that will get us 6561. If we try a few, like 3 cubed is 27, that's not high enough. 3 to the 4 is 81. And we'll keep on guessing these numbers until we find out that, that 3 to the 8 is equal to 6561. So therefore, since the powers are equal, then these exponents are also equal. So we can say that n is equal to 8. And of course, we can plug the 8 back into our equation and see if we get 16,400. I think that we do. What if we tried using the intersect feature on a graphing calculator? Well, once we get to this point, we have 3 to the n is equal to 6561. So what we can do is use our y equals. And in y1, we could say, well, we know it's going to be 6561, and in our y2, it's going to be 3 to the exponent of some variable n, or we can use x here. Now, remember, we're going to have to change our window settings. So when we change our window settings, we're looking at, uh, we could say, between 0 and 10 if we want. And then if we use our y minimum as 0, and then our y max. Remember that we used y1 to be 6,500. So it would be nice then to use the y max and have that 6,000 rate in the middle. So I'm going to choose 13,000 here and then use a scale of maybe 
1000. Just this scale here just tells us where the tick marks are. So when we graph it, we have the 6561, and it looks like, ah, there's a nice intersection that we can find. So second trace intersection is number five, first curve, second curve, and the guess close to that point there. And we find out, yes, x or n is equal to 8. So let's fill in that information. We say that y1 is equal to our 6561. y2 is equal to 3 to the x. Now these can switch spots. You could have y1 is equal to 3 to the x, and y2 is equal to 6561. Now, we did a lot of algebra here. In fact, you could have put the 16,400 as y1, and this whole expression for y2, you then have to make the y maximum, like 32,000 for this to work. But that could also work. Here we get our intersect, and our window had to be where x minimum was 0, the x max was equal to, uh, say, 10, and the y minimum was equal to 0, but the y max was equal to 13,000 here. And that was an important point. We had to change our window settings so that the intersection would show up. I like using twice the amount of what we see as one of these constant numbers so that it will be in the middle of our screen. Just for the sake of being thorough here, I'm going to show you that you also could have put the 16400 as y1 and that whole expression for y2. And then I had to change the window here and make my y max. And I liked having it twice the amount of that 16,000, so 32,000. And then when I graph it, you can see that the intersection shows up here. And when we calculate the intersect, you'll have an 8 right there, x equals 8. Okay, let's take a look at class example number 7. A golf ball is dropped from the top of a building 100 meters above a paved road. This, this is a very tall building, 100 meters. In each bounce, the ball reaches a vertical height that is 3 quarters the previous vertical height. So what are we trying to find? The vertical height to the nearest tenth of the ball after the seventh bounce. So I think it's important then to draw a diagram of what's happening so we can see uh, see what's going on here. So we have this this building which is that high and then the ball gets dropped so it comes down here and drops down and so the ball travels right there and there's the ground, right? And then afterwards the ball will bounce up bounce up here to three quarters of its height and then come right back down. Hits the ground and now it bounces up but only 75% of it again and this process continues. So, so there we have the scenario of what's happening. So when I'm talking about seven bounce, so it comes down here and that's the first bounce. Here's the second one, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we're looking at what happens right as it's coming up again, right there. So what is happening? It's coming up after the second, seventh bounce. And what is that maximum height there, that, that height that it reaches after that seventh bounce? Well, here's the way that we're going to, to look at it. If this is our first term, then we could say this is the first one. So if we were to let it fall right there, we could say that that blue one is the same distance or height, just in, in a different direction, of that upwards vertical height. So we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's the eighth term if we use this drop, this very first drop. So if we think of T1 as the original 100 meters, then that means that the height after the seventh bounce will be actually T8. Okay, so if that's the case then, we'll use our 
Tn is equal to a r to the n minus 1 formula to find out what that term is. It's the blue term that we're trying to find here, um, but it's equivalent to that red term. So we have T8 is equal to 100 times, now what is our R? Well, our R is that common ratio. Now the ratio here is three, three quarters of the previous vertical height. So we can say that R is equal to three quarters. And eight minus one, we have 100 three quarters to the seven. And when we punch this into our calculator, we get 13.35. But to the nearest tenth, we're talking about 13 point, uh, this is three, four, eight. So this is going to be 13.3 meters. So this is going to be the vertical height that it reaches after that seventh bound. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's the height of that next height after the seventh bounce. Okay, we're trying to find now in B the total vertical distance to the nearest tenth traveled by the ball when it contacts the floor for the seventh time. Now if we take a look at our scenario again, we have it, the ball is at the top of the building, it drops down, and then you can see the blue ones, all the blue terms, all the blue down ones form a sequence on its own. So we have a blue we have a blue series here. And then also, remember the ball bounces up. So we also have a red series. And it looks from like from this point on, the red and the blue are exactly the same. So this red and blue, same. Red, blue, same. Red, blue, same. Red, blue, same. And it keeps on going. So there's a matching one, except for this very first one. There's a down. So we have a couple options here. We could say we could start on this one and use the red one and then double all that and then add this original height. Or we could have an imaginary, imaginary red one that goes up to the top. And then we can say, that starting with the top one here, the first one, we everything is doubled, and then we'll have to remember to subtract that red one because that's not part of the, the ball's travel. Okay, so that's the option I'm going to choose. I'm going to say that we have a pair of series here. So you have two SNs, but then I'm going to subtract this imaginary red. So I put the red in here so that everything matches up and, and everything would be a, a doubled series. And then I'm gonna take that away to make it more realistic. Now remember this part is just the wall of the building. So the total height can be represented by this expression. Two times the whole series here with the very beginning height as the first term and then subtracting that imaginary red height. Now when it talks about contacting the floor for the seventh time, then it just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're cutting it off there, right? We're not letting it bounce again. So it touches the ground there and that's it. So that means we're talking about n being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. n is equal to seven. So we could say 2s7 minus 100. Okay, if that's the case then, let's follow along and we'll write down what the formula is for s7 and plug that in. So we have two times the formula for s7, remember, I'll, I'll just go over here to show you, is s7 will be equal to a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Now remember that r was equal to 3 quarters. Our a here in this case, or our t1, we're going to use the 100 meters. That's our very first term. And so we can plug this in, yes? We can say that this is 100 times 3 quarters to the 7 minus 1 all over 
3 quarters minus 1. And let's plug this in. So we have 100 times 3 quarters to the 7 minus 1 all over 3 quarters minus 1. And then, of course, we're taking away that imaginary red up distance. Now, when we do this, this 2 will be multiplied by 100. And so we have 200 times 3 quarters to the 7 minus 1 divided by 3 quarters minus 1 is going to be negative 1 quarter. And again, we have minus 100 here. Now, in order to, this is divided by a quarter, so we could almost think that this is multiplied by 4. So this here, 200 divided by negative 0.25 is going to be negative 800 times 3 quarters to the 7 minus 1 minus 100. And if we continue that, we'll have negative 800 and we will have this will be neg uh, 0.133483 minus 1 and then we have minus 100 and we have this middle bracket will be 1 it's going to be negative 0 0.8665. Keep all the decimals in your calculator, then multiply it by eight, negative 800, and you get a positive 693.21. Remember now, we have to erase that, or subtract that imaginary red distance, so that's minus 100, and we get 593.21 meters. And so the total distance is going to be equal to 593.2 to the nearest tenth of a meter. In part C, it's also a complex question, but we're going to tackle it as well. It says, how many times does the ball need to bounce to travel approximately 675 meters in vertical distance? Now we just noticed that when it bounces seven times, then it goes about 593 um, meters. So we're looking, you know, how, how many bounces could it take? It's got to be more than seven, but we could try guessing to see what it is, but that would take a long time. Let's see, the total distance, remember, the total distance that the ball travels is equal to this expression, right? 2SN minus 100. Now, the SN that we're talking about is using the very first, very first downwards and then creating an imaginary up with the red and then we're going to be subtracting it. So this is the, the imaginary red distance that we'll be subtra subtracting afterwards. So if that's the case, then we want the total distance to be 675. So if that equals S, 2SN minus 100, that means that 2SNs are going to be equal to 675 plus 100, so 775. And then that means then that SN on its own, one of the SNs is going to be 387.5. Now this particular one now no longer corresponds with the actual uh, real life situation, but by solving this, we will get the equivalent answer. So we have SN is going to be, well, we can say this is A times R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. So using A, remember A is equal to 100, the R was equal to 3 quarters. And we are trying to find out what the n might be. So here, 387.5 is equal to 100 times 3 quarters to the set, whoops, the n minus 1, all over 
3 quarters minus 1. And 3 quarters minus 1 is negative 1 quarter. So when we talk about negative 1 quarter times, well, let's just do that part. 387.5 is equal to 100 times 3 quarters to the n minus 1. And we have divided by negative, we'll even say negative 0 0.25. That's the negative 1 quarter. We're going to be using our calculator anyway. So that means to solve and get into this bracket here, we're going to multiply by negative 0 0.25. So this is going to be negative 0 0.96. Oops, we're going to have to divide by 100 too. So 387.5 divided by 100 is going to be 3.875. So 3.875 is equal to 3 quarters to the n minus 1 divided by our negative 0 0.25. When we multiply both sides by negative 0 0.25, we get negative 0 0.96875. And that's equal to our 3 quarters to the n minus 1. Now, isolating this section, we can add 1 to both sides. So then we get 0 0.03125 is equal to 3 quarters to some value n. And here, I would say, let's use our calculator to find this. But what I'm going to do is, 3 quarters really is... I can find an exact decimal here um, that represents that. So we have 0 0.75 to the n is equal to 0 0.3125. Now, of course, we can always do left side equals y1, right side equals y2, and then find an intersection. But let's just guess with a, a few numbers just to see what's happening here. So we have 3, the exponent, well, it has to be bigger than 7. So if we tried 8, that wouldn't be. Oh, sorry, we need to try 0.75 to the 8, and that's not close close enough here. That's uh, too big. So let's try 0.75 to the 10. We'll try that. Well, that's a little bit closer. It's a little bit closer. We, we have 0 0.05 when we're looking for 0 0.03125. So we could also keep trying here and say, oops. We could try that, that's a little bit closer. And then if we try 0.75 to the 12, we get something that's quite close to this 0 0.03125. So let's get a, an exact value here. So we have our 0 0.03125, and it could, we if it was nice to store this value, we could have used that value in there to make it a little bit more exact. But I have five decimal places, so that should work out. And we have 0.75 to the exponent of some variable. Now, what is my window setting? Uh, we tried the, we said it was around 12. So we'll just use 15 for the max and for the y maximum. Remember, we're talking about 0 0.03. So let's try 0 0.07 here and then have the scale of 0 0.01 and then we'll see what it looks like. So we have in the middle of the screen which is quite nice and then we have an intersection. So if we find that intersection, second trace and then intersect, first curve, second curve and when we get close it's 12.04. So 12.04 is when it exactly will get to our 675. So that's just after that 12th term. So I guess it does take 12 bounces to, it takes just a little bit more than that 12th bounce to get there. So then we say that n is about 12, approximately 12. So the ball needs to bounce about 12 times in order to travel the 675 meters total. Let's take a look at class example number eight. Consider the geometric series defined by this 
definition here, Sn equals 5 times 3 to the n minus 1. Let's find the first four terms of the geometric series defined by that. So if we talk about S1, why do we need S1? Well, S, the sum of one term actually just equals that first term. So that's going to equal 5 times 3 and using the value of 1 in for n. So this is just 5 times 3 minus 2, or sorry, 3 minus 1. So this is 5 times 2. And so our first value, our first term is 10. Well, what about the second term? What can we get from the second term? Well, the second term really is equal to the sum of two terms minus the first term, or the sum of one term. So here, s of 2, we put 2 in for n, and then we minus our 10, which is our sum of the first term. So 5 times 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 1 is 8. So we're looking at 5 times 8 minus 10. And that's going to be equal to 40 minus 10 is 30. So that is term 2. What about term 3? Term 3 is going to equal the sum of all three of those terms minus the sum of the first two terms. So this is going to be 5 multiplied by 3 cubed minus 1. So this is 5 times 27 minus 1 is 26. And S2, well, we had to find S2. Uh, S2 was right here, 5 times 8, so that's 40. And here, 5 times 26 is equal to, well, 5 times 20 is 100, 5 times 6 is 30, so we're 130. That is our S3, and then minusing 40, which was our S2, that's going to be 90. And finally, T4 is going to be equal to the sum of the four terms minus the sum of the first three terms. So S4 is going to be 5 times 3 to the 4 minus 1. This 4 came from substituting that 4 in for n. Minus S3 was this part, right? This was the 130. And here we have 5 times 81 minus 1 is 80. So 5 times 80 is 400. 400 minus 130 is equal to 270. So these are the first four terms. Now the second part says, can we find term 9 without using this formula? Hmm. And my question is, why can't we use this formula? But anyways, let's see. T9 will be equal to the sum of 9 terms minus the sum of the first eight terms. So if you put all the terms together and you had the sum of nine terms, and if you subtract the sum of all the eight terms before it, then really you're only left with the value of that very last term. Okay, if this is the case then, using this formula we have five times three to the nine minus one and minus 5, 3 to the 8, minus 1. If that's the case, we can say, well, what do we have here? We could just get this in our calculator, so 3 to the 9, and then minus 1. These are 19, 682. And then here, minus 5 times, what is 3 to the 8 minus 1, is 65, 60. So really it's 5 multiplied. You can get a number here and a number here, but 19, 6, 8, 2 minus 65, 60, and those are both going to be multiplied by 5. And so you get, this is going to be, 5 times 13122, two, and that is going to be 65,610. So this is our T9.
9. Which brings to mind, you know, we have this Tn. In a series, Tn can be Sn minus S for the sum of the previous n minus 1 terms, right? So Sn minus S to the subscript n minus 1. Let's take a look at class example number 9. We have E. coli bacteria on a petri dish. At the end of the first hour, 30 bacterial cells are present, and the number of new bacterial cells produced each hour forms a geometric sequence. We have a total of 40,950 bacterial cells are present at the end of six hours. Let's see how many new ones are produced in the sixth hour. So take a look here. After the first hour, we could talk about that being term number one. So this is after the first hour. This is after the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now we don't know what this T6 is. We don't know how many are produced in that sixth hour. But it says that the total sum, the total number of bacterial cells after six hours, and we can see that's S6, right? This is six hours. So that's the sixth term is going to be 40,950. So what are we trying to find? We're trying to find really R, right? How many are produced? Once we know what R is, we can find out what that value is. So if we take a look at the formula for S, Sn here, we could say this is A times R to the N minus 1 over r minus 1. Now this doesn't have that term t6 in there which we need. And if we used another one we could say sn is equal to r tn minus a over r minus 1. But there's two unknowns that we don't know here. So we don't know r, we don't know tn. So here's my strategy is if we can use this formula to find our r, then once we have our r then it'll be a little simpler to find T6. So my strategy is this. I'm going to find R first, then use the, the R, plug it into this formula, and then we can find our Tn. Okay, so following that strategy, we know our A is equal to 30. We know our SN is equal to 40,950. So here we have this 40,950 is equal to 30 times R to, now it says N here, but remember that we're talking about it's six hours, at the end of six hours, so this is six. And then it's minus one and R minus one. Now here we can simplify by dividing both sides by 30. So 4950 divided by 30 is going to be our 1365. So we have 1365 is equal to r to the 6 minus 1 over r minus 1. Now at this point, we can certainly use our calculator and we would say y1 is equal to 1365 y2 is equal to our, well, I'll use x now, x to the 6 minus 1 all over x minus 1. And then I would use a y max of about 2600 so that the intersection will happen in the middle of the screen. Now, what would you use for x max? Well, you have to kind of guess. Maybe it's between 1 and 10, um, but you would just adjust the window settings. But before we do that, let's see if we can make some guesses for what this R might be. So if we think, well, R could be 2, right? We could say 2 to the 6, and then plug it in to see what it might look like. So minus 1, and then that'd be divided by 2 minus 1 is 1, so 63. A little bit too low. If we tried something like, what about 5? What if we use 5 for r, 5 to the 6, minus 1, and then divided by, 
according to the expression here, 5 for r, 5 minus 1 is 4, then we get 3,906. So a little bit too high. So then the next one we could try is 4. 4 to the exponent 6 minus 1, and then divide that by this expression 4 for r minus 1. And ha, look at what we found. We found that it 4 for the value of r actually will make this expression equal to 1365. Okay, but let's actually do this with uh, our technology. And so we have 1365 and then this expression of x to the 6 minus 1, close bracket, divided by open bracket x my, oops, minus 1, close the bracket, and change the window settings and the maximum, about 2700, I guess. And when we graph it, again, we see it right in the middle of our screen, and the intersection is nice, nice in there. And we have intersection uh, 4. So we found out that our r was equal to 4. Now, following our strategy, again, we found r. Now we're going to work with this equation. So t6 is equal to r a r to the 6 minus 1. So t6 is going to be equal to 30. r we knew was 4 and 6 minus 1 is 5. So then using our calculator we could say 30 times 4 to the 5 and it's 30,720. So in, in that sixth hour, then 30,720 new bacterial cells are produced. Okay, you're ready for your assignment, and I will see you in class.